So Extinct will be taking profit. It's like he'd be going on the solo lane. He's already got one level on Trent, which is generally the way it goes. Winter will be taking the role as the Earthshaker. Ice takes Crystal Maiden. That's rather appropriate. KYXY, he'll be on the Lashrak, so solo mid. And uh, we have Yamata. He'll be taking the Nakes. Jumping over towards Manessi's lineup. Jay, he'll be taking the uh, Tiny towards the middle lane. And we do have uh, what I like to call him the Pirate, is R. Uh, Ray. We're taking the uh, Tight Hunter in towards the middle lane. Won't be there for very, very long. He's just there for a ward, and then he'll rotate around. As Jules, he gets the Marana. Woots. That is him. I just realized he just changed up his name a little bit. Nice. That's uh, Chen. Well, he's our last one over. He takes up the Shadow Shaman. Now nah, it's my little reference boys on the side. It's been a long couple of streaming, so I always like to double check some things. Treants having a little bit of a scout. So it's good to keep those treants on top of the uh, runes, and that's the reason why Jules is here. It's like the treant battling off. Is the rune going to spawn on top? No, the rune will spawn on bottom. That's an invis rune for winter. Yeah, awesome. Great, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you very much. All right, so 24 seconds. We're now in the crit waves have spawned up. Tiny versus Lashrak. Was he going to go for his first level? Do we see him go stun? Do we see him go lightning storm? Uh, just continuous harassment on Jay might make thing, might Jay might make Jay think twice I'm about running in. Counter warding up for the radiant side. Getting rid of these walls so they can gank on the bottom lane. Tide really wants to finish this off. He realizes too if he comes in a little bit too close that he can find himself in a little bit of uh, hurt. We've got another shake of CM as well as Nakes on the combo. <laughs> up towards the top lane, Jules. Marana up against the Nature's Prophet. So Prophet does get to go solo. It's solo on the easier lane though. It says tri lane on the bottom is going to be the hard one, and we see Shadow Shaman not going in towards that middle, because obviously Tiny is there. But that wave has already been pushed back. It's a problem with Tiny when he throws out that avalanche very early on. Pushes the creep wave back towards the tower. Makes it safer farming for KYXY, but makes it more difficult as well, because the tower starts right-clicking on the towers. Uh, on, on the creeps. And when that happens, well, let's just say, the burst damage of the tower makes it very difficult to get a couple of right-clicks in. Troll coming in through the rear. Don't know if it's going to look for Nakes. The Dead is already making the move, that cold snap, and he's going to let off one little stun. That's just a little bit of harassment on the Razor. Open wounds on Woods. He's going to be really careful. He's overextended right now. CM with a stun. ES Fidget goes as well. Woods is on the run. There goes the Shackle out from Shadow Shaman. And Ty puts his body on the line, blocking the orange path. He wants to ensure his teammates stay alive. Oh, this middle end's really going to be careful. So he's got a whole bunch of consumers he's got to use. Is the yeah, it's a double damage rune. And anyone's got a bottle yet? Not at this point. They're still a little bit short of it. And Jay is still taking a lot of damage. One on Edict, one on Lightning Storm. That's the reason why he can take a lot of damage. And that mana pool is still pretty high here from Lashrak. But he's used a lot of his consumables already. And now with a 600 gold, he can buy up his bottle. Jay is still 70 short. Not exactly what he wants. Chen finally going inside the jungle. Doing what he does best, convert up those Ursas. Make him fear to go, on to go into the jungle. Because then the stuns can land and CM is basically fighting up against four heroes. Double damage rune gets picked up by Marana. And KOAXY just going to be forced back inside the lane. So a couple a little bit of damage from that one, but Marana leaves Prophet alone for a while and that's going to give him a lot more levels. It's a fun reason, it's the reason why I do enjoy Prophet being up on a, uh, on a solo lane. Gets those levels a lot faster, which means the Treants come up a lot faster, which means the push from Orange can come a lot sooner. Up towards the top, Marana. With that DD rune last hitting is so much easier, and Prophet's just going to be a little bit more cautious about this. But to keep those Treants back, don't want to give extra farm towards Jules, who's already got enough from that Crete wave. Tiny. Courier's taking the bottle back already. 
So both both players in the middle lane running Bottle Crow. In fact, it's a dedicated Bottle Crow. We've got two couriers running up. So Jay running running a dedicated courier. I love this kind of stuff. It means he's going to feel so confident to spam up everything. That's not why need the runes. The runes will definitely help. As we now can see the four minute runes spawn up. But Jay knows at any point he'll always be able to pick up that rune or always be able to pop off all these abilities. Because that courier can just keep on running. Another bottle's running up towards the top lane. So we've got double bottles running for Maneski. And there goes the Prophet TP. Well, he's not going to grab it though. Will the Avalanche toss combo? Or oh, KYXY is going to be really careful. Low life and even now the courier's going up on the high ground. Speed for on it. It's on the run. Are the couriers hunting each other? He's using the courier to scout. Searching out for anybody around here. It's the haste from the courier as well as Jay. It's the reason why they can keep up with each other. And they're rotating up towards Extinct on the top. And he's going to dive this. We've got a 3-2 combo. He goes for the TB. Proper gets out just in time. Avalanche goes out from Jay. And that's not where the first blood's going to be. It's going to be on the bottom lane. The Chen sp spills it. And now they're going to pick up Nature's property. He was TPing down towards the bottom lane. And Prophet's just like, crap, maybe I should have set up on the top lane. Chen wants to finish the job. Is there a nuke? No, eight seconds off cooldown. But they can find themselves in Earth Shaker. It's the Satter. It's the one creep you never want to get as Chen. And Nate comes back towards the bottom lane. So one kill for Chen. And one kill for Nature's Prophet. The trade-off on the bottom lane. Jay goes back in towards the middle lane. Meets up with KYXY. Who just turns on the Edict Avalanche toss combo will be enough. Yes, it is. Only just. No <laughs> That's one large rock throw. Jules holding up on the top lane, pushing that courier just off the side. He wants to know where Extinct is. Once again, Maneski using these couriers to really scout out. Two flying couriers, it's, it's 400 gold they're spent for each of these little suckers. It's also a risky thing to do, these couriers are worth a lot of money if they're killed. They're worth money for everybody. 150 gold per player, I believe. Jay is now on the run. He finds himself a regen rune. Wants a look, Avalanche gonna set up for the arrow toss combo as well. Mariana leaping up in the air. And Tiny gets the kill. Pops the regen room, probably a little bit too early then. These couriers are going nuts, leaving the bottle on the ground. It's like these couriers are dedicated towards Mirana and Tiny. A three to one now, the favor of Mineski. Prophet still getting these levels up, and this is not to be underestimated. Prophet's getting a lot of farm up here on the top lane. Let's just check out our goal graph. Like 750 gold advantage for a team who's got three for one. A couple of recent kills as well. Well, that's looking okay. Your XP grass is going to be a lot better than that. Yeah, 3,000 XP at the advantage towards uh, the Radiant side. Well, that's never good. DPM disconnecting from the game. Shadow Shaman thinking about the bottom lane. Really weird build for Shadow Shaman. Massively weird build for Shadow Shaman. Two on Hex and two on Shackle. Open wounds now on, um, on Maneski's roots. Chen can't get through that little creep camp, and then Prophet Ultimate trying to help out. Nuke dropping down, but the Rage comes up from Lake, from Nakes. Able to finish the job now. Tiny's going to come in. Chen has to start it off, and the toss going up is for the Anchor Smash on the Crystal Maiden, because they're going to look for a double right now, but they needed to get tied back down. Here, Shadow Shaman will be brought down. ES lands the Fissure. That's what gets the last hit. Jay has another combo in just a couple of moments' time. Courier flying in as well. is <laughs> flying over the top of Nature's Prophet. These couriers are everywhere. That's a double kill for Jay. Tani really being involved in these fights. I just love how the couriers is just like, it's like spectating. KYXY, while Tani's away, he gets to play on that tier 1 tower, and that's at two levels on Edict. Only two levels, and you can bring a tier 1 tower down that fast. That's that power of the Edict. And while that happens, Jules takes out the top lane. Double Wraith Band for him, he'll f finish up his Agi Treads, and Jay is on the hunt. KYX, why doesn't have a lot of mana, he's gonna look for a stun, turns on the Edict to start with, and turns himself around, and Jules, close range arrow, and here goes the combo. Up in the air, he does. He dies even before the fall. Jay wants to keep going, Prophet did TP in there to help out. But it's already too late, and now Ice gonna come in. 
as well as uh, the Earthshaker. Orange trying to rally to protect their heroes. But Maneski hunting everywhere on the map, and that's that power of the Tiny. But they did make Tiny pay. That tier one tower that went down the middle lane doesn't make that an easy lane to, to go on. But what I want to talk about is Shadow Shaman's build. It's just so weird. This is never a standard build. He's got a full disable build. Normally you look for the burst damage, so you get the high levels up in Ether Shock. You get one in Hex. Even, even then, that happens about level 8. The rest of it goes in the Shackle, then, then the Mass Serpent Wards as well. Every single time you can level it up, you level that up. And in this case, he's just gone huge levels up on Hex. Which is just so unusual. The burst damage you get out from the, from the Ether Shock is more than worth it. And if you combine that with what Jay's just currently doing in the bottom lane, that's just death all round. I do have these wards up in the bottom end. Uh, oh, Jay just gets sent back to base. He was pretty high on life as well as mana. Not quite sure that was really needed. Or maybe he's just going to, going to go in the middle lane. That's probably exactly what it's for. KYXY. Really wanting to push out this middle lane. Gotta really say I'm impressed by Maneski's movements. It's just so fluent and it's staying everywhere on the map. They want to have a presence. They want to keep Tiny everywhere on the map. And it's working perfectly for them. And Tiny has no fear or spending any of these abilities, he's almost got a blink dagger, and when that happens, hello! Good ward trap! Yamatar is blocked in the bottom lane! He will knock himself away from this one! The ward trap out there from the Shadow Shaman holds him in place. And there goes the lifesteal, and Nace is on the side. Chen pops off the heel, and now Jules going on the Nature's Prophet. There's a lot of damage. That's just normal right click, so that's the reason why he's fallen back. The Wilkins and the Undead want to push through the bottom lane. Chen's on very low life though. He cannot stick around for long. And the Shrek is going to try and defend this. Four levels on Lightning Storms. So it's not going to be the easiest push of, of Mineski's life. ES Fissure. Stun as well. There goes that Lightning going through the Creep Wave. TP on towards the front lines. Nakes is here. Going to open wounds up in Shadow Shaman. He has no wars this time. And it might not be enough for him to live. Chen's going to try and pull him back. It might be enough time. It's not enough time. Ravage will pop up from Tyler if he's low life as well. Stun, ES to start it off. And right clicks there from Lashrak will do the job. Three down from Maneski, they've overcommitted, but then again, Nature's Prophet slow life. Jay's gonna TP himself out for the stun there from Lashrak. Four heroes go down. Wow, Lashrak really wants 120 mana. <laughs> so they can push, but then again, look at Jules, top lane, pushing on the tier two tower. Maneski lose four heroes in the bottom, they're gonna look for a trade in the tier two on the top. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So I love about this game. There is no turtling. This is a full-on brunch. You show your hand, you say we must push, we must push you hard. That's exactly what's happening. Prophet TP's up towards the top lane. And Jules. Are you dealing a decent amount of damage with those agility boots as well as having the double wraith bands? And more importantly, he's got 1400 gold. And that means Yasha is not far off. And what do we got flying up is the bottle coming back up for Jules. And Tani is on the run. He's not going to be happier with the fact he died in that bottom lane. He's going to set that blink dagger back by about another two, three minutes. Depending on if he can catch somebody out right now. And there's Earthshaker in the worst position. Jules is going to pick up that illusion rune. Finding Winter. Arrow is going to fly. Winter avoids it. I don't think Jay's going to get there in time. He's trying to, phase boots are popped, and now the TP's coming towards the middle lane. It's Yamatar, but he does not want to be here. Avalanche misses! And they've got to get themselves out. Jules is currently locked inside. He was hoping that man is... Well, he was hoping that illusion room might get himself out, but it's not going to work. Open wounds now going on Jay, tossing the raise, the, uh, the heal life stealer back again. With that right click, as well as Fissure and Prophet Ultimate. Everything they needed to bring down the tiny orange hat at their disposal. It's not over just yet. Crystal Maiden getting caught out. That's why she don't go bush. And Shadow Shaman buying himself some time in the bottom lane to farm up. Still four levels on Hex. Just blows my mind that is the case. He has no burst damage. That burst damage is generally feared by everybody. But not in this case. But level four Hex. Level two Shackles. Level one Mass Serpent Wards.